everybody, it's AJ Guyton. Welcome to another episode of the House of Hoosier podcast. And I'm here with my guy, Austin Render, and we're looking, we're talking Indiana basketball 2020-2021 today. How are you, my brother? I'm doing great, AJ. I got to, I think some questions that people want to know about this year's team from, from a guy who, who played in the Indiana basketball system. Mm-hmm. You were an excellent shooting guard. Mm-hmm. It feels like the shooting is the part. Can we take you and go back to your playing days and put you on this team? What what does this team have to do, do you think, to get into that shooting rhythm that you guys had and old Indiana teams have had? Just feels like that's the one thing that's lacking. You know, uh, back in my days, we, we shot a lot in practice, definitely. So that's the beginning of becoming uh, confident in, in shooting a basketball. Uh, you know, Coach Knight always gave us the freedom to shoot open shots. Any open shot, you take it. You don't pass it up. And uh, when I look at, you know, the first three games, the three or four games, that they four games that they've played, that, you know, I, I don't really count Tennessee Tech. It's always the warm-up game. But the three competitive games that they played, uh, it's, it's, it's important that today's game, to understand that today's game is about guard play. And, uh, you know, I think Trace D- Jackson Davis is man in the middle. I think those minutes are secure. And I think that production at that position is secure. I think Race Thompson is coming along. And I think he's the perfect hybrid for, for today's game. Uh, I, want, I would like him to be able to stretch a little bit more to open it up for Trace. You know, it's because they're almost playing three guards out, two in right now. And, and it makes it tough on Trace to operate. It's already a little tough because playing against a lot of length, you know, he's having to create uh, angles to the basket and to have two people there is, is tough. So what I would like to see, uh, you know, obviously all of Archie Miller teams are great defensively. I think he's been a great defensive coach since he stepped on the scene, his intensity. A lot of former players are, are understanding the importance of defense, but it's also important to understand where the game is now. And if you look around the country, you know, uh, your top five teams, Gonzaga, guards, uh, Illinois guards, Baylor guards, uh, you know, and teams are those are top three, th- three or five teams that are all predicated upon their guard play. And I looked at this team as almost playing like we played in the, my freshman and sophomore year in a Big Ten, where there was six, nine, six, ten guys, and we just waiting to throw it in and kick it out and play this type of game. Um, Fantasy, Durham. Um, even Anthony Lille, Franklin, they have to increase their production and confidence on the basketball court in order for to let to, in order for Trace Jackson to breathe. Uh, they're going to smother him, and and the better the longer the, the further the season goes along, the more pressure is going to be on Trace if these guys don't uh, take the. Sh- shots that they can make now you look at their percentages their percentages are pretty good man they they uh you know i think fantasy is shooting over 55 percent from the field i think you see 66 percent from the three-point line and if you shoot those kind of numbers you need to take more shots you know fantasy is a guy that needs to get the average 13 points for assist a game in order to for that for us to be successful i think armand franklin passes up a lot of shots i saw them running some actions to getting some shots but Armand needs to get out in transition, get some open shots, and shoot them with confidence. Knock them in and, and get those reps up. You know, you might have some bad games. I mean, that's shooting percentages always find a way of working themselves out. You know, there's some guys shoot 60%, and all of a sudden they have a, 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 a streak where they're, they're missing everything. And it, by the end of the season, they're averaging 40% from the three-point line, things like that. But, you know, you don't you miss all of the shots you don't take. And, uh, you know, in order for Trace Jackson to breathe, in order for Royce to breathe when he's down there and at the five when we go small, in order for us to be successful, we're going to have to get a lot more production out of those guards. Well, then my question to you is this. You were a great shooter, and I'm sure, as you said, you had your nights where it just wasn't going. Or even as a freshman, maybe you were still trying to get comfortable. Right. What's your advice to guys like Christian Land or Anthony Leal, these, these younger guys Armand Franklin that do need to get their confidence up. Maybe they don't have the confidence right now. How do you generate that as a shooter? I think uh, when I watch Christian Lander, he's an important, I'm glad you brought his name up. He's an important cog to, to their success and he has to develop quickly. But what I see when I watch him is, is rushing. I feel like he's trying to score. 
And as a freshman, when I came, walked on the scene, people don't understand it. I think I missed my first 18 threes my freshman year. I'm, now I'm an all time leading three point shooter at Indiana right now. But my first freshman year, they think the sky report was you can't shoot. And I knew it was far from the truth, but I never went out on the court to hit threes. I went out on the court to produce. I went out on the court to push the tempo. I went out on the court to make sure Andre Patterson got the basketball, Neil Reed got the basketball. I was out there defensively making sure my guards never got in the paint. And letting the game come to you is the easiest way to find your game. I watched Christian Landers shoot. He shoots a quick shot and quick. You shoot like that when you're on fire. When you're not on fire, all fundamentals matter. You get in the gym, you catch, your, your hands are ready, you lock, you, you follow through, and you we, we leave that gooseneck up there every shot until we master it. And I think that he wants it a little bit too bad right now. And so and nothing's really positive happening for him. He just needs to relax, calm down, and notice that, hey, I have Armand Franklin on the wing. I, I'm backing up fantasy he comes, or I'm playing with him. If I'm playing with him, then my mindset becomes scoring. You know what I'm saying? When I'm when I'm running the team, then it's about getting shots off of the other guys, the Royces and the, you know the Traces and, and things like that. So patience and let the game come to you. But you know when you're on the floor, you have to figure out a way to be productive and make plays. Well, that's great advice uh, coming from a shooter. And speaking of shooters and scorers, you got to talk to one of the best shooters and scorers in Indiana basketball history. Great conversation coming up here with Isaiah Thomas. Absolutely. You know, I had a pleasure to, of talking to my one of my idols coming up uh, from Chicago, West Side. You know, I'm from Peoria, Illinois, so two and a half hours away from one another. Our, our careers are kind of parallel, playing for Coach Knight and, and going through, you know, so the adjustment periods of playing for Coach Knight and his system. But, you know, one of the all-time greats, man, and I think everybody's going to enjoy that podcast. Make sure you tune in. Welcome to the House of Hoosier podcast. I'm here with uh, someone who doesn't need an introduction. Um, he's one of the all-time all greatest at the NBA level, at the collegiate level, at the high school level. Welcome to the House of Hoosier podcast. My main man from Chicago, Illinois, Isaiah Thomas. How you doing, my man? I am doing great, and thank you for welcoming me to your house. Absolutely. <laughs> our house, brother. Our house. Mainly your house. I just got a room in the building. <laughs> but uh, how? what's the, when you think about Miss Mary, what comes to mind immediately? You know, perseverance. Yeah, definitely. You know, and she had this saying, you know, she said, you know, she always tell me, she said, baby, if you take one step, I'll take two. Dang. And I'll work the wonder for you. Right. <laughs> but you gotta take the first step. That's powerful. That is powerful, man. <laughs> and and I and, and those are the things that, that, that come to mind. Uh, you know, and when you talk about her and Coach Knight, they had a they had a great relationship, a right. unique relationship. Um, you know, one time now you appreciate this, Adrian. One time <laughs> we we in the middle of a we in the middle of the game, not the middle of the game, but <laughs> halftime and everything else, we go in the locker room. And you know how Coach Knight walk out mm -hmm. back door and then he come back in? Yep. He walks out and my mom comes through the other door. <laughs> and I'm like, my dear, you got to get out of here. Right. <laughs> you can't be in the locker room. Hey, here he coming. <laughs> he came in like, hey, you know, you got to do this. Y'all got to. And then Coach Knight walked in. And when he walked in, I'm like, oh, I'm giving it. Here you go. I just know I'm giving it. Already... Dude, he stopped. He stood there. He said, tell him. Tell right. Him. <laughs> you know? and, and, and from that day, it's like my mom and Coach Knight, for whatever reason, you know, and still to this day, Mm -hmm. Coach goes in and out, but every time we talk, right, mm -hmm. he always asks me how my mom. Is. That's incredible. And he always has stories about my mom. Yeah, sister. I mean, they, they. I, I remember <laughs> one time, right? You know, I coach get on you in practice and everything. So, uh -huh. You know, you call home. It's like, hey, you know, I'm. I can't take this. No, uh, it's time to go, man. <laughs> Dude, crazy. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, my mom listened. Everything else. And so I didn't know this, but she had Coach Knight's number, right? So 
So I guess she called coach right after we got off the phone. Uh So the next day we come and practice, right? Mm. And he called me into his office. Now, you know, you don't never go into his office way back in that little room. Right, yeah. (laughs) I'm like, oh, man, I'm getting ready to die. I know this is good. (laughs) He called me into his office, right? And I go into his office. He dials the phone, and my mother picks up the phone. She says, Coach Knight and I have been talking. (laughs) And whatever that man is telling you to do, I want to hear no more shit out of you. (laughs) 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 And they say, then she say, and don't call me no more. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Now your lifeline gone. That's the lifeline. I ain't got a chance. Man, it's, <laughs> hurry up and get this over with. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, that, that little room, man, ain't nothing good happening. You go back to that room. I, uh, I'm going to tell you I that. I went in that room one time. That's the only time I ever got to go like back there. Really? I was like, Oof. I'll tell people the one time I went back there is when, you know, uh, I think, believe it was like my sophomore year. I think Coach Felling and him had got into it about – they ended up with Coach get, Spelling getting fired. And I'm, for some reason, the timing, they had called me back there and it happened. I hear books. Yeah. I hear you ain't this, you ain't that, you. My, I'm like, oh. And then he called me in there and wanted to meet. Now, you know that meeting didn't go very, like, come on. <laughs> I was like, what? I'm looking, it's a tornado. I'm like, what happened? Right. And you know, I'm young. You, you young. You don't really care. I don't know what's going on with the coaching staff. That ain't none of my business, but. Coach, now it was that that nothing good happens in that room. So, and I mean, backtracking, man, who's the best Thomas brother athlete? Which one of your brothers should have made it to the league? If I would say my my oldest brother, uh, Lord Henry. Yeah. My brother Larry. Okay. Larry actually had a tryout with the Chicago Bulls. Okay. Um, and he played with uh, he played at, at Wright Junior College under mm-hmm. Ed Badger. Uh, Ed Badger actually then went on and was becoming an assistant coach for the team mm-hmm. that year. And my brother had a tryout. And a week before, he's working out and he blew his knee out. Wow. And that was like. That's wow. it. How big was he? He was like 6'2". Six six okay. Two. Yeah. So he was a point. No, actually, believe it or not, he could jump out of the gym. He played forward back then. <laughs> he was the poor man. <laughs> he, was, he was the poor man back then. <laughs> wow. Hey, that's that's crazy. Is it is it true that they used to sit you down and critique your game and and it was never positive, obviously, like <laughs> tell you everything you didn't do. <laughs> they believed uh, you know, the way they the way they thought about the game and the way I was taught the game, it was about really about playing chess. It was about Mm -hmm. understanding the geometry of the floor, understanding the physics of the game, and understanding how to use your teammates to help you win. Right. Uh The first thing was was just teaching you the geometry of the floor. You know, squares, straight lines, and boxes. They breaking this down in the circle? That's how you do it. (laughs) And then they're talking about the angles, you know, the you're on a 45 degree angle, you know, what the box, the box on top of the box into a yeah. mm-hmm. you know, why, why, why are you taught to kick that man off the box? You kick mm-hmm. him off the box when he's on the low post, right? Every coach oh. told you, you got to move him out, get him off the box. Move off the box. You got to get him off the box because he on the 45. Mm-hmm. 45 on the box goes right up to the box on the square. Mm-hmm. Right? And then it falls right back in the circle. All right. So, and and so so that that's what they so it's like the breakdown of the game was not how many points you scored or you didn't do this it was when you were on the floor 18 feet from the basket on the left hand side and you had the middle open why'd your dumb ass go baseline <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy no film straight off the top they remember everything and, and 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 you had to answer the question and it's like okay well you know until you learn the right answer it's like well i thought i had the baseline open right and they say well which foot did he have up did he have his left foot up or his right foot up 
I, I wasn't looking. Well, that's why you made the wrong decision. <laughs> Intricate it was. Wow, that that's that that's amazing, man. But I could tell that you know, just going through that process, man. That's that's how you get that that telepathic memory of everything that's happened on the court. And the great ones like you know yourself, LeBron, these guys, they can remember every single play. And and I'm sure that it was developed from that moment, them bringing that to you. Most definitely, definitely. And then it was then it was further taught. With my high school coach, yeah. Then with Coach Knight, mm-hmm. and as you know, with Coach Knight, it's like I tell everybody this. They say, "Well, you know, he he was so disciplined and he was so rigid, and you know, how did you play for him?" And and <laughs> I go, "You know what? It was more rigid when I got to the pros. I never really? had a play in, in college. Uh-huh. Like, yep, like, never ran plays. Kind of called twenty two up." Yeah, right. Now, you know, <laughs> down, you know. Three, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i never forget, AJ, and I was just talking to Woodson the other night, right? Uh-huh. So we playing in Iowa, and and it, uh, Woody had hurt his back, and he, he's coming back, and and it's a close game, and, and now it's a timeout. And this is when I'm like, okay, I've been waiting for this coach night you know, diagram. Right. right. So this this is when the genius is getting ready to come out, right? <laughs> so man, we get to the bench and I'm I'm waiting for the clipboard to come and he's gonna draw something up and <laughs> and he sit there and he goes, he goes, with me, can you make a shot? He goes, nah, I don't think I can make a shot right now. <laughs> I say, Whitson, can you make a shot? But he goes, Yeah, I can knock it down. No, I'm sorry, he asked Butch. He asked Butch Carr. He said, can you make one? Yeah. No, I can't make one right now. He said, Woodson, can you make a shot? He's like, yeah, I can make one. So he said, he called me Pee Wee. He said, all right, Pee Wee, this is what we're going to do. Uh, you know, let, let's, let, let's swing it around a couple of times. Woody, when you come off the screen, knock the shot down. Pee Wee, make sure you deliver a good pass. <laughs> No, no, no. How you gonna get it inbounds? Or right, yeah. So, so I get it in, and you know I'm pass faking, I'm shot faking. <laughs> right, running, go get it back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, pass good. You know, somebody coming back, give him a little shot fake. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Woody, where you at? Right. <laughs> so, came off the screen, kicked it to him, he knocked it down. We win the game. We win the game. And I, that's that's a, a very very true statement, man. Because it was, I think people think that it was like the, and I don't feel this way. It was like the military when I was at IU, like from a basketball standpoint. From, I, and I tell them, I said, man, Coach Knight recruited guys who wanted to do the right thing. That's so it. just so he didn't have the police. Now every once in a while, you have one one dude on the team that that's rogue. And he go, you got to make sure that he get out everything done the right way within the confines of the culture. So I can definitely uh, attest to, to exactly what you're saying. Um, the, the, uh, so how, how did the handle, going back to, you know, coming up, how did the handle get so tight? When did you pick this ball up and just start making the sweet music that you make with it? How did that come about? So you you say the sweet music and I, I and I. Immediately, I go to Sweet Georgia Brown. Absolutely, yeah, it's music. When I when I when I learned how to dribble, right? I went to Martin Luther King Boys Club, mm-hmm. and fortunately enough for us, Abe Saperstein and the Harlem Globetrotters, they would mm-hmm. come and train and and be around the Boys Club. All this was happening on the west side of Chicago. I was very fortunate mm-hmm. to, to experience this type of knowledge, even though we were very poor. Right. So Curly Neal, Marcus Haynes, now they dip, they 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 giving dribbling drills and, 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 and teaching and coming and speaking at the Martin Luther King Boys Club. Mm-hmm. Learn how to dribble from Curly, Curly Neal and Marcus Haynes. Wow. You can see me pat it on the floor, yeah, down, dribble it, get up on my knees and yep. it flow, all that. When you when you see me dribbling, that's Curly Neal and Marcus Haynes. And then you took that to like high school NBA because that's all I knew. Yeah, I forget when I got to Indiana, right? <laughs> oh, I know this. <laughs> yeah, well, the only way I knew how to change directions was to go through my leg. Yeah, right. Yeah, Coach Knight was like, uh, "What? What they used to say? 
I put some mustard on that hot dog. <laughs> and finally, I just had to say to him, hey, "Look, I'm not, I'm not hot dogging. You know, this is a quicker way for me to change direction. Right, quicker." I said because in my neighborhood, when I grew up, if you put that ball out in front of you, like it's they gone. Cross overnight, it's gone. Oh, it's <laughs> gone. <laughs> they gobbling that up. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's gone. So, so if you put your knee out there. <laughs> right, right. They gonna hit that knee, and you can put it between your legs, and now you can go the other direction. Right, you gotta spin. But in our neighborhood, the way we grew up, AJ, you know, yep. if you got that ball out here in front it's of you, cool. oh, I'm eating that up. I'm, I'm eating that up because defensively, the way we grew up in our neighborhood, <laughs> the, the defense you. is close to you. Yeah, <laughs> right. So you, you had to turn your back. You had, you had to. to. So, <laughs> So I'm I'm going between my legs, changing direction and everything else. Finally, he was just like, <laughs> all right. Yeah, he said, all right. <laughs> but you had to explain it to him. Right. But but in explaining it to him, like I'm explaining it now, like mm-hmm. that, you know, I'm authoritative. I, I'm, yeah, yeah. But back then, AJ, I was like, well, you know, coach. <laughs> right. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> It's like, you know, I'm trying to get it to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I'm, I'm surprised he was cool with it. Like, that's because, you know, Coach was stubborn when, you know, keeping that basic, like you said, shot faking every single possession and has faking and looking at the rail. Like, he, I was surprised he was okay with that. As long, long as you win. Yeah. And long as you, you know, if you ain't turning it over. You know, you, you got a chance. And, and what I what I give Coach a lot of credit for is mm-hmm. looking at everybody's game and saying, okay, you can do this. I'm going to let you do this. Mm-hmm. You can't do what he does. Right, yeah. So, so don't even try. Don't even, right. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, hey, so – one thing about you, and I, and I know this instilled a, a major sense of accountability and discipline in you early, was that 90-minute commute one way to high school. How the hell did you do that and, and, and not dip off every other day and just act like you went to school? <laughs> Being naive right. is, is, you know, it, it's a blessing. Mm-hmm. Right. I really didn't know... Um, any other way in terms of this, this how I got to school, you know? So <laughs> right. Every day, you know, 4.30 a.m., got to get up, make sure I get that, that 5, 5.15 bus. Yeah. If I miss that bus, I'm going to be late for school. And, and, you know, so I'm taking, so I took three buses to the end of the line, two trains to the end of the line. Mm-hmm to walk a mile and a half once I get off the last bus. Jesus, man. <laughs> and, but I, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't know. I really you didn't know. know. Like, you know. Were you tired when you got to class? I, I'm, I'm sure I was. <laughs> you know, Good. you know, you're young, you, you don't know, you, you're not thinking about it. That, that then, if I fell asleep in class, it was like, well, you know, I just, hey, man, I fell asleep. I'm tired. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> right. You know? That's crazy, man. I, that's, and then you're not even including the elements, the Chicago elements. We talking about, the, they don't call it the Windy City for nothing. So <laughs> anybody who's from Chicago or, or from Illinois yeah. know how to walk back. Exactly right, <laughs> right. <laughs> because it's just an automatic thing. The wind start blowing. Yeah, as it start blowing, you quickly just turn right, right. right. <laughs> walk back. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And it's funny because don't nobody ever like say anything or even make fun of you. You it's know, normal. <laughs> it's normal. Like in, in Chicago, you in Illinois, you'll see people just constantly, you know, the wind are blowing, and all of a sudden they just you turn around and just start. <laughs> Everybody like, hey, how you doing, John? Right, right. As they go the other way. <laughs> hey, that that that's the hundred percent truth. Putting putting your arms in the sleeves all the way in seems to be warmer that way. I don't know yeah. what it is. Even with gloves on, so all the, all the Chicagoans know those tricks. 
And if you, you had some Vaseline, you would grease up. <laughs> now you about to go boxing, man, <laughs> just to get to school. Now all Chicago is no. Uh, so you, you, it was worth it going, you know, traveling that 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 uh, far to play for one of the greatest high school coaches ever, Coach Ping. Was he anything like Coach Knight? He was, he was very similar, and I just found out. I just found out. I just found out uh, a couple of weeks ago that their birthday is on the same day. Wow, Mr. Fingertor, and I didn't know that. Um, hey, uh, but they their basketball philosophy was very similar. Mm-hmm. Right? So in high school, I never ran a play. It was all right. the game. You know, just pass, move, cut. You know, read, react, understand your teammates have relationships with your teammates in terms of knowing what they're going to do. It was, you know, it was all about critical thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, mental is the physical, it's four is to one. You know, it's a right. man's game, and, and they, mm-hmm. they taught you how to think the game. So I got four years of that in, in, in high school under Mr. Pingator, and then I go to Indiana, so I'm way ahead of the game in terms of how Coach Knight wants to play. Because in high school, I played the same exact way, right? The yeah. same exact teachings mm-hmm. that I get in, in college at Indiana. Right. I could walk in and, and understand where I'm supposed to go, read, you know, shot fake, D cut, get open, you know, pass, move, cut, duck back, all of that. Yep. All those things that we was teaching at Indiana, how to get open, I learned in high school. The first time I ran a pick and roll, AJ, <laughs> first time I ran a pick and roll was in the NBA. Wow. I never, Coach, Coach Shore didn't run none of that. I never ran mm. a pick and roll in college. Mm-hmm. I never ran a pick and roll in high school. And I definitely wasn't calling no plays. Right, right. Imagine, not, imagine I get to the NBA my rookie season, and they give me a playbook. Like, think, think it's all out, 100 play. <laughs> they like, you know, you gotta remember this, and this is – this is 32 down, this is 27 up, and all that. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I've, ne- I've never called a play. Right. I've never had to, you know, like, hey, man, you know, if that guy's going left, I'm going right. Right. You know? Yeah. And so the freedom that coach gave you, yep. you know, most people have a hard time understanding that while we were very disciplined as a basketball team. Mm-hmm. We had the ultimate freedom. Absolutely. I agree with that. Shoot. Well, some people didn't have the freedom to shoot. Right. <laughs> we, we know, but that's that's the discipline though. That's knowing who discipline. knowing who's who who you are as a player. That's the discipline. Yeah. And, and that, that that's an amazing and now that, that's crazy because you and I'm, I'm thinking back to, you know, I think that it was a perfect storm for you coming to the NBA because the, the fact that you never ran a pick and roll didn't matter. You knew how to play, how to play the game, but you also knew how to take over a game yeah. because you did each one equally. So, I mean, that, that I can tell now just talking to you how you became who you were, who you are. Um, you won a, you won a championship in, at, at St. Joe's. Um, who who were some of the top players? No, let me ask this question first. When did you realize you was different? When I got into the NBA? Yo, really? Is that long? Yeah, because you, okay, okay. Because you was a number one player in the state. You a, won a championship. You won a championship in Indiana. You didn't see, like, I made this dude fall. <laughs> like, I'm different. <laughs> so, you and I grew up very similar. Mm-hmm. So, and we had, you know, the, the same credentials, the same credentials you just said about me, you had the same credentials. Right, yeah. But when you went back home, how many dudes in your neighborhood was giving it to you? A, a, a whole bunch of them. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. so I, never, I never could really think like, oh, I'm this good, because in my neighborhood, I couldn't beat the guys that I was playing against. Right, right. I couldn't beat any of my brothers. Okay. So, so you know, Going, going to high school, going into the NBA, when did I realize that I can make money playing in the NBA? I didn't right. realize that until, you know, probably uh, late in my sophomore year mm-hmm. uh, when they started talking about you can go into the NBA and make money. You got to remember, when I was growing up, the NBA wasn't on television. 
Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Uh, you know, Magic's game in nineteen. We won it in eighty one. Magic won it in 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 the NBA in eighty. In eighty, when he beat the Philadelphia seventy six. Yeah. Mm. Delayed. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> he wasn't even on national television. Hey, we went from that to the bubble like that. <laughs> that's dope. So you gotta understand yeah. my, my frame of mind back then was, <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, I, I can I can make some money. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't looking at myself like, oh, I'm the best and, and all this other stuff. Even though oh. people were writing that, yeah, that I never really thought that. Because okay, so you asked me about high school. Mm-hmm. So in high school, these are the NBA champions that were in my high school class. Uh-huh. Eddie Johnson, Mark Aguirre, mm-hmm. Doc Rivers, Daryl Walker, Craig Hodges, Rod Higgins, and myself. Wow. Those are the NBA champions. Yeah, hey, that's just the champion. That, that don't count the ones who didn't win one. Yeah, we ain't talking. <laughs> so we ain't, we ain't counting Terry Cummins. Yeah. We ain't counting, you know, um, Hershey Hawkins. Yeah. We ain't, we ain't counting, you know, um, um, uh, I'm blanking on his name right now, uh, Mitchell Anderson. Yeah. JJ. Who led the state in scoring. JJ was a bucket. <laughs> yeah. So, so we're, not, we're not counting all of them who made yeah. the NBA. I was just counting the champions that were in my – my two year high school junior senior class. Right. That's that's nuts. And while we before we transition out of that, who I mean, I hear this debate all the time. I'm a big fan of Chicago basketball and there's so many to name. Who who the 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 greatest basketball players that come out of the city, inner city. I ain't talking about suburbia. The inner city of Chicago, in your opinion. It, you know, there's so many. I know. I, that's tough. Many. I mean, and when you look at the guard spot, to me, the ultimate guard was, and, and people don't talk about him enough, is Kevin Porter. Like I remember Kevin. Yep. Go, go look up KP stats. I will. I'm writing that down. The little four or five year run that he had, nobody has done what he did in that three, four year period in terms of a mm-hmm. You know, but so KP and then he was high stepping, you know. <laughs> So, so Kevin Porter, uh, Ronnie Lester, who was in, yep. uh, then you had Billy Harris, of course. Okay. Billy the Kid Harris, uh, Sonny Parker. Woo, Sonny. Mickey Johnson. Uh, you, we, it was so many. You had Lenny Williams over at, at Harrison. I mean, it was so many great high school shows. Right. That, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to just say, okay, this one was the best. This one was this. Because yep. Any on any given day, any of them guys that I just named, who, who a lot of them didn't make it to the Hall of Fame. Right, for sure. Man, they was giving it to you. Yeah. <laughs> you giving it to you. Right. <laughs> you know why I ask that question, especially you guys like you, is because it, it's gonna make to for, for those guys to hear their name come out. Your, it's gonna make them feel. Wonderful. And I, I love to make guys reminisce on, you know, how good they were. Even the guys that didn't make college, Hall of Fame, all that stuff. It's the dudes that's with that that molded you and made you who you are that should be at that induction, that should get that credit because that's where you became. You had you were trying to 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 beat them. It wasn't you ain't even it wasn't uh, uh Dennis Johnson or it was Billy the Kid. It was like, you know what I'm saying? So I just love them giving their flowers, man, because, you know, a lot of them are just regular family men, and good, but they don't understand the impact that they have on a, on a Hall of Fame like yourself. And if you go back and, you know, Lynn, Lynn Williams had the – he was left he was left-handed. Uh-huh. He had the prettiest jump shot <laughs> that any of us had ever, and, and ever seen. It, it, it was just – it was perfect, man, and his right. follow-through – his rotation, and then then they had a, a, a guy who, who who was a fan, and he would always, and every time Lynn would shoot, he was a beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> and the ball would be spinning. In the air. Like slow motion. <laughs> and, and, and the fan was, and he was screaming, beautiful. <laughs> 
and when it went in, it go yay. <laughs> that is, oh, hey man, that, that's dope, man. That is dope. But, hey, before we get to you know our Indiana, I want to take you through what I call the Hoosier Ten. There's gonna be ten questions to see if you can remember. Uh, that, that some of them you can remember from your days as a as an Indiana basketball player. The first question is, you know, Coach Knight made us all stay in the dorm. What dorm did you stay in? It was uh, it's called Ashton now, but back then it was called GRC. Okay, Ash GRC. Right across uh, from Peter Quad. Okay, <laughs> you remember your memory sharp? <laughs> Dang it! Uh, when when you were in school, what was your favorite restaurant to eat? Uh, Bruce's. Bruce's. <laughs> Is Bruce's yeah. still there? I don't. It was there when I was there. <laughs> uh, I still there now, but Bruce's was the place you you can go there and get some food. But but you won't. The only way you can get there is one of the seniors would have to take you because oh, you know, wow, you can walk there, you know. Oh, okay, every yeah. now and then, Butch or, or Woody would, would take us over there. Mm-hmm. Um, or Kitchell, Kitchell had a car, so we, oh, okay. <laughs> and wh- where's your favorite place to eat if you go visit B Town today? Um, oh, what's that steak place? Um, Zagreb's, Zagreb's, yeah. Bill Zagreb's. <laughs> oh, okay. Who was the toughest player to defend in the Big Ten for you? For me, the guy who just gave it to me, I, I, I couldn't get a handle on him. It's Reno Gray out of Illinois. Really? <laughs> hey, AJ, he only averaged four points. <laughs> Never Reno Gray saw me. He saw he was <laughs> all. It was 20. Right. <laughs> and Coach Knight would be killing me. I'd come back to the bench. Ah! He killing you. <laughs> and one time he was screaming at me, so he's killing you. I said, I know he's killing me. Right. You ain't got to see that. that. Everybody can see that. Yeah, yeah. He's killing me, right? <laughs> man, I wish I could be in them huddles, man. That is crazy. Hey, so what what was it about his game? Was he awkward or he's a bucket? He's awkward and yeah. I, I couldn't figure. I don't know if he was awkward. I don't know if he was good. <laughs> I don't know if he jumped high. I just know Reno Gray was like giving it to me. And I'm writing like, that down. I gotta look that up. <laughs> when you when you ask me what was it about his game, hell, I'm telling you, AJ, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. That is funny, man. What, do, what, do you remember the toughest place to play for you? What, did you is there some place you didn't get a win? Uh. Didn't get a win. I think we. I think I got a win at every every building. every building. Okay, okay. We'll leave it. We'll, we'll have our producer do some research and figure it out because they they can find that. So yeah, Wisconsin was was a tough place. I, um, yeah. But I think we always eked it out there. Um, Minnesota. I mean, every place in the Big Ten. Was it was tough. tough. The barn, the, the raised floor. I was just talking to Yogi yesterday. He told me to tell you hello. I, okay. In my opinion, the second greatest lead guard to play at in the big at, at IU. I love watching him play. And he said we talked about Wisconsin, about how boring it was, and there's like no school song on playing. It was, and they just lull you to sleep and hack you with all them big old boys, and you leave there just like, man, what happened? Like, you know, and I don't think they've won there since 98. My sophomore year was the last time I you won at Wisconsin. So yeah, I was one of the toughest places. Place. I got a funny story about Wisconsin uh, and Mike Woodson, right? <laughs> you know, and you I forget the name of that hotel we always stayed at, but it was I know. off the water. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. And and so they had a apple pie a la mode. Mm. Well, you know, I don't know. You know, we didn't know what a la mode was. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. And so they, they bring they bring the apple pie and, and Woody goes, and can I get some ice cream with that? <laughs> Everybody start laughing. I know. <laughs> I'm not laughing because I don't know what Alamo means. Right, for sure. And they go, and, and Kitchell goes, you don't know what Alamo is, do you? <laughs> I go, no, what, what is Alamo? He goes, he goes, take a guess. I said, well, I'm in Wisconsin, so I'm I'm guessing. Okay, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the, the, the ignorance. Everybody's <laughs> laughing. It's like, no, nah, Alamo is ice cream, man. Wow. 
okay, all right, okay. Well, <laughs> Alamo too. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, what was your? Oh, and I'll ask this question because I know you got thousands of them. What was your most memorable Bob Knight moment? I, I would say, um, and this is this is a sensitive moment. Uh, so we playing at Northwestern, mm-hmm. and my and everybody knows like my my brothers and and all of them, you know, on drugs and everything else. Yeah. So we at Northwestern, and my brother is at the game, and and he's literally out of his mind, gone. And the IU cheerleaders are there. So he goes and he starts cheering with the cheerleaders. Wow. I mean, and, and he's gone and he's making a, a, a huge scene. And, you know, we end up winning the game and everything else. And I never forget, you know, as, as we walk in off the floor, my brother is excited because we won and everything. He runs up to coach. He gives coach, you know, like, you know, a five and everything. Coach gave him five. And coach grabbed my brother, you know, kind of like, you know, that picture you got behind you. Uh-huh. Gave him that little hug, you know. And and we just walked on off. And Coach Knight never, like, you know, he never, like, said anything about my brother mm-hmm. or else. You know, like we didn't catch on them, they was killing me, you know. Right, <laughs> right. Wow. Oh, they, they, they was killing me, but but Coach Knight, the way he handled that moment, mm-hmm. it was so cool and it was, you know, it was like, is this dude all right? Yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say. He, Cause he could have he could have handled it, you know, yep. different, threw him out the building and all this stuff, but he was like, you know. He, he with us. Right. He made me feel like, even though my brother was all toe up, he made me feel like, okay, he with us. We, we Right. And he can't come on the bus with us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to draw the line here, but hey, and, and, and that's the thing about coach, and I tell people, he communicates in his own way, especially with us. Yeah. It's never going to be. Isaiah, I love you, man. You you killed that game. You yeah. you was the best player on the floor. It's gonna be a look. It's yeah. gonna be a, it's gonna be a wink. It's gonna be something nobody sees. And that's that's his form of communication, especially with I would say us. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, who was your favorite teammate and why? Oh, I can't I can't give a favorite. Okay, give me give me your. And I, I would say like you know Whitman, Kitchell, Woodson. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony Brown, James Thomas. Tony Brown, I, you know, that's a name. I mean, they, you know them. That that was kind your of your brothers. Like, yeah, but you know that's not to, you know, like Franz, Bushi. I mean, all of us were like really close. Right. Full uh, disclaimer: whole team, my boys. Yeah. But I mean, like the guy that you know when Coach got on you, and you was like, man. What's up, man? I need I need a break. What's up? Where we on? Like it was one guy or just it was just a plethora of guys. It was a plethora, you know yeah. you know all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever available at the moment. Hey, you hey we can't go making it say like we needed a a, a full support staff yeah. behind us. <laughs> uh, we need we needed them all. Sometimes it was buzz, Kirby. Buzz, yeah. <laughs> it was like, it was like, hey, we 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 need all hands on there. Right. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Buzz is our academic Buzz Kirby is our academic advisor. So yeah. she was she's responsible for making sure all of us graduated for those yeah. who don't yeah. Know, yeah. love Buzz. Um and, all, and who is on excluding yourself, three other spots who's on your IU Mount Rushmore? You got the spot. I don't want to hear all this mess. You got one spot. I need the other three. Um uh. So for me, uh, you know, I, I'll put Quinn Buckner there. Absolutely. Um, shoot. Um, you know, and, and also, you know, just what, what Mike Woodson yeah. meant to me. I agree with that. You know, as a, as a, as a person, as a player, someone developing, you know, I, I would say, you know, Buckner and Woodson, you know, and and I, I can't even talk basketball because I got to talk to total picture. But for me, 
Buckner, Woodson, Whitman, and Kitchell. If okay. I like, you know. Absolutely. You rock. Right. Horsemen. You know I what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Like when, when things go wrong, you know, anywhere anywhere in my life from from 19 to this day, those those four I just named, in some way, shape, or form, has always been my go-to. Okay. Hey, man, what you think? Well, I, I, I love that. I love that loyalty. I'm gonna ask you this last one for that section. Have do you do you Quinn from Chicago? Quinn, one of the goats. Quinn, to be talking stuff people just don't know. He be talking mad big stuff. Have you guys ever talked about who will win a scrimmage between '76 and '81? I would. We we've never talked about it, but I, you know, that '76 team was kind. Of, you know, they it was nice. I yeah. mean, they it was lo- each position was loaded, and, and, but they had you. They have Wit, Tober, Turner, but but as you as, as you know, right? Uh, there's a then there's a toughness factor. You're right. It's always as an Indiana, you know, basketball team. Ch- I mean, there's a. It's like yeah, playing basketball is cool. Now, now, how good can you fight? Right. <laughs> <laughs> How good can you square up? <laughs> Who had the best hands, right? <laughs> and, 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 and so I'm I'm gonna get at 76 team the edge because they have one guy I just think like would just give us all kind of problems. And that's Bobby Wilkerson. Bobby Wilkerson. Bobby Wilkerson, most underrated Indiana Hoosier yeah, ever. I, I, just, I, I think we could I think we could we could we could match up and and, and be all right in certain positions. But I think Wilkerson would 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 do something to help you change the game and get that 76 team the edge. First of all, he'd be all over you. That's the number one thing he'd be all in your way, because he was he's today's guard. What they yeah. doing today, that's Bobby Wilkerson. And then I can see that fro in him <laughs> <laughs> looking like Shaft. <laughs> Get this dude off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and hey, hey, you would see a lot of this. Yep, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he's standing right there like that. <laughs> hey, man, that's I, I, I thought that I think that'd be a great game, man. Um, it's just hypothetical. We always talk hypothetical because you had Landon Athletic getting up, you had Ray, you had you with, but you know, they had Scott. Yeah, so, ooh, I mean, can't. I mean, you know. I mean Scott. I mean Scott May coming off them them screens and everything else. I, I mean we would have we'd have chased out, but I. I think <laughs> he said, "I don't know." <laughs> he's getting buckets. Right, exactly. <laughs> then when they had when they had May in Green in Abernathy, hey man, that was they they had some shooters, man. They did. They did. Then they had, mean, then they had some tough boys. I mean they wasn't. No. I mean, it's like, yeah, I may be faster than Quinn, but you know, at that time, Quinn to grab your last. Right. <laughs> right, Quinn. Quinn was the four man playing the point, <laughs> and Quinn was a DB on the football team. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, forget I asked. <laughs> American football and basketball. And basketball. <laughs> hey, because if y'all would have started winning, he would have he would have squared up, and it was. <laughs> Hey, look, yeah, you can shoot, you can run, and all that other stuff. But look, yeah, I'm getting ready to beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what would have happened. That's exactly what would have happened. Hey, so you, Indiana, you being recruited. Coach Knight comes in. I ain't get the pleasure of Coach Knight coming to my house, but you, you, you and Mark McGuire were great friends. Why not DePaul? So my mom, my mom made the choice for me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Like, and, you know, like, like kids today, they pick up the hat and say, hey, oh, man, I'm going to such and such. You're right. Mom called the press conference and said, hey, my son made his decision. <laughs> no, she didn't. Now, now, when Coach Knight came to visit, this is who he brought to the house. Mm-hmm. Quinn Buckner. Oh. And Wayne Embry. He pulled out all the stops. So when, they, when they walked in, my mom was like, "That's who I want my son to be." <laughs> you had Wayne sitting there, you had Quinn sitting there, and it was like, you know, when you talk about modeling, mm-hmm. 
And like you say, that's who I want my son. He was looking at Quinn and Wayne yeah. like junior, like, you know, you wanna you wanna be like them, this is where you go. Right. I was looking like you know, they ain't giving us no food. <laughs> All you think about is food. No <laughs> car, like the, the lights are out, you know. Yeah. Like AJ, we had a jug of water, and you know what I'm saying now. Yep. The milk so old milk jug. That was it. <laughs> and it wasn't sugar water. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, you know? That is amazing. But you did you ever have any conversation about, hey, I want to go home with my boy? Oh, yeah. I wanted to stay home. Mm -hmm. I wanted to stay home, go to DePaul. Look, I'd have been with Mark McGuire, mm -hmm. Teddy Grubbs, Terry Cummings, Gary Garland, Clyde Bradshaw. How fun would come on. You probably wouldn't have got nothing done. <laughs> I think we would have won. Yeah, you would have won. But those streets would have been cl clamoring them streets with, with, with your guys, man. It, it, it's been a lot of trouble. Absolutely. <laughs> but we, so, so when we win in 81, we actually are supposed to play DePaul. So we in the Dayton region. It was. I remember, yeah. And, and, and we're playing Maryland. And DePaul is playing St. Joe's. So we blow out Maryland. And the next game is the Paul St. Joe's. And I know like, okay, if, and then the, then the regional was going to be at uh, Indiana. I think the section was gonna be mm -hmm. um, And so I'm telling Mark, like if y'all win, ain't no way y'all gonna beat us in Bloomington. <laughs> right. Y'all may beat us if we played the game in, in Kentucky or yeah. Kentucky or somebody, but coming into Bloomington at IU, Y'all ain't gonna win that game. Right. This is not happening. <laughs> but they ended up losing to St. Joe's. Oh, okay. And we ended up playing St. Joe's in, in, in Bloomington, Indiana. And then that's oh, okay. Okay. So you go, going into IU, you pick IU. You know, I've heard about the big fight. We're not going to get into that argument and all that. that uh, we can go to uh, was Shannon Sharp's podcast and okay. check that out. We already talked about that. But you, People don't understand, man. You went to the Pan Am Games as a straight out of high school and competed internationally. What and played well. I mean, you had Ralph Sampson, Mike Woods. You had some of your, you know, you, you didn't know them at that time. It was your first year. But also, you was your first time auditioning in front of Coach Lighton. From what I heard, it really ain't go that well. And how, how was that experience? Well, 79, I'm in high school. I know. That's what. Wait, wait, AJ. I hadn't even graduated. Really? I hadn't even graduated. <laughs> That's crazy. So they don't I, understand. I'm in high school. I go to tryouts, right? And I, you know, I, I do well and everything. I, I didn't know I did well, but right. You, you, you made. Know. And so now, now we're practicing. So we practicing in Bloomington, and graduation day. I fly back from Bloomington that morning so I can graduate that afternoon. Wow. Do you know that evening I had to be back at practice? Right, you had to go back to <laughs> so I just, I, so I missed my whole high school, you know, ceremony. Yeah, you, know, you didn't school. enjoy it. But I, I didn't enjoy it. Now, so 79, I'm, I'm in high school. That's crazy. And, and now I've never, you know, I've, n I've never been outside of America and all Absolutely. This. So we we traveling like now we we on the road. We go to Italy, we go see all yep. these other places, and I'm crying like mm. <laughs> that's what I'm picturing. I'm like, go home. Like I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so we we plan in all these different, you know, countries and practicing, you know, Coach Knight practicing you hard. I mean, yeah, that's absolutely everything else. Mm -hmm. so now um, we end up going over to Puerto Rico. We win mm -hmm. a gold medal in Puerto Rico. I'm actually named the MVP of the of the tournament. In really, as a high school player. That's 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 one of the most impressive things I've heard. Like just being straight out of high school. Now, when you say it didn't go well between Coach Knight and I, no, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, man. Um, they feeding us food that I never knew existed. 
Right, exactly. Hey, man, I'm not eating that. Right. What? Hey, I, you know, filet mignon. Yeah. What is that? You probably pick it up with your hand, did you? <laughs> Can you cook it? Right, right. <laughs> Can, right. Like this is. It, this is kind of red, like right. <laughs> can you cook it a little? Bit? Right, exactly. Send my food back, like, hey, can you cook? They're like, oh, you're not appreciating what you got. No, it ain't. Not <laughs> that man, my, you know, fettuccine and all this other stuff. I, I ain't never heard of this kind of food. Right, some beans. Can I get some cornbread? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh man, it was. You know, it was, it was oh. definitely a good time. But good, good. I learned a lot, saw a lot. And mm-hmm, definitely. I mean, I, I was impressed because when I went to the USA Basketball website, they got a nice picture of your team. And I'm looking at the roster, and it said Isaiah Thomas, St. Joe Westchester. I said, they ain't even at this point get, enjoy <laughs> you straight off the on internationally. And, 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 you know, the international game is totally different. It's yeah, not, man. you know, it's totally different. The way you defend, how physical you can play, it's just not the same. So I, mean, uh, I commend you. Yeah, brother. Thank you. <laughs> and, and so, so we 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 getting ready to go, and then I'm gonna have to bounce because I got another get on another Zoom call. Okay. But wait, we getting ready to. Uh, so the the gate the the game before the championship game, we're playing Cuba, and again, I had never been outside the United States and all this other stuff. So I'm I'm, and I and I really didn't understand, you know the. The, the international, you know, ex, you know, people don't like America. Right. I didn't. I wasn't. I didn't know. You know. So anyway, so it's me, John Dorn, and Kevin McHale, right? That those are those are all my, my 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 two guys, right? So we we hanging out, and and the Cuban national team is coming by, and so I didn't know. You know, I was like, hey, brother, what's up? You know, blah 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 blah, and. And I remember the dude looking at me like, and I'm like, and, and, and John, we call baby, he grabbed me. He's like, man, we playing them tomorrow. Like, you know, right. they, they want to kick your ass, you know? <laughs> right. You know, but hey, you cool, you know? So, you know, brother's walking by, you know, you give him the brother nod. You know, yeah, exactly. And I don't right. know why we give the brother nod, but we always give the brother nod, right? Right, exactly, right. <laughs> so I gave the acknowledgement, you know. And anyway, so the next game, the next day, the game start. Now, the starting guards was Kyle Macy and Ronnie Lester. Those are the mm-hmm. starting guards. The, the, the ball gets thrown up on the tip. And the guy that I had nodded to and said hello to, he was starting for the Cuban national team. Oh, okay. He turns around and he hits Kyle Macy right in the jaw. Bam. And he breaks Kyle Macy's jaw, right? Dang. I'm, I'm messed up. I'm like, <laughs> right. <laughs> what, what just happened? Yeah, because I'm still in high school, right? Yeah. Coach Knight gets up and he's walking down the bench as if he's looking at me getting ready to put me in the game. <laughs> AJ, this is what I did. Right, put your head down. <laughs> not that dude. <laughs> I'm not going here. Hey. So he looked at me and I was like, mm. yes. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> and he grabbed John doing. He said, John, go to the cow. And John walked past me and he goes, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> Y'all thinking the same thing. That's crazy. <laughs> man, that is crazy. Oh, it was bad. Hey, how, how much time do you have? Actually, I got to get on another radio. I got a radio at 12.15. Oh, okay. Uh, so, I had a, I mean, I got a, if you, if it's okay with you, this is not live, so I'm just talking to you just off of, hey, if we could maybe do a, another part some other time. It, oh, yeah, it won't be it won't be this long because I had I want to dig into the national championship 1981 because I know you guys struggled a little bit early and then yeah. you found your stride and I got this real question to ask you with that that Gilbert Arenas talked about man and and it and it really it was really like um not basically saying that the night uh, the the re- defense is not existing anymore because the offense is so good and in the 90s. 
you guys have maybe one, two offensive players. So they're basically there's no defense that can defend the players today because they are so good. And I immediately thought about you. Well, I would, I would, I would, I would 100% disagree with that. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I would disagree with it, and it all depends on the rules that you're playing under. Yeah. So, I, so what? Well, let me change that. Not 100% disagree. Right. Mm -hmm. Under today's rules, I would agree with him that if you can't, if you can't, you know, really get close to anyone. Right. No one can defend the offensive skills that players have today. Now, if you let us get close to you, yep. then now you have to turn your back. Mm -hmm. And all the players who have a low shot pocket release. Mm -hmm. See, when we was playing AJ, you had to have a high. high shot, yep. You couldn't shoot it from so your right hip. Right here, yep. And the reason why you couldn't shoot it from your hip is because I could be this close to you. But now I have to stand two to three feet away from you, and therefore you can go back to your little boy shot. And we all know you. <laughs> what you call it? <laughs> That's your little boy shot. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the That's little boy, boy shot, right? I'm writing that down. That's I'm done. You, you get it from your little boy shot from your hip, you can wind it up. You got longer distance, you got longer range, but and therefore you can be more accurate with your little boy shot. But yeah. you got to put your shot up here and put it up here. Okay, that that's a different kind that of changes shot. the story. Yeah, and and the reason why you had to get it up here is because the defense would be that close. To that you. close to you, right? You couldn't you? Couldn't, you can anytime you put that ball on your hip to try to bring it up. And checking closeness, uh, you, you you couldn't do it. That's why it. everybody had to dribble like this back then. Back then, yeah, had to protect that ball because the de the defender was right here. Yep, breathing on you, you could smell his breath. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, right. you you was taught how to protect. You had to protect the ball. You had to get that defender off you, and you had to dribble over here. Exactly. You could not turn around and face mm -hmm. that you was really really good with that ball. right exactly you turned around and face and if that defender was really good oh he taking that from you right for sure i remember playing against mo cheeks and then i gotta run oh yeah i'm gonna let you yeah go ahead I playing against mo cheeks right and i went through my best stuff da, 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 da. and by the way he's in the hall of fame from chicago too we absolutely we forgot how we forget that like, come on. Right. <laughs> but I went through my leg, da, 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 and he did this. <clears throat> <laughs> as, still there. as if to say, hey, that 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 ain't gonna get me, right? Oh, right. And, and then later on in his career, you know, I'm dribbling and I'm calling a play, and and I look down and he and he looks up at me and he smiles. He goes, three years ago. You know how to took that from me. <laughs> right, right. My man. Well, you can turn to the side. <laughs> he had slowed down. Yeah, right. right yeah. Slowed down. You know, he wasn't as quick. His feet weren't as good. Mm -hmm. so, you know, it's like he was like, I remember. I never forget. He looked at me during the game. He goes, <laughs> Three years ago, I'd have had that. I'd have had. It. <laughs> I believe it was 1979 when you walked back on the Indiana camp. This, when you walk onto the NBA, Indiana campus for the first time, was it 1979? Yeah, 79. Yeah, so you go, you, you your first practice, you go into practice, man. Can you, do you remember, can you describe what that, that first experience playing and practicing for Coach Knight? Well, you didn't hear all the talk before. They're going to they gonna butter you up and make it feel like it's the greatest thing in the world until you get in there and you hear that screeching, you hear that, that, that scowl, you see the scowl, you know what I mean? Tell us what that was like walking on there for the first time. You, you got to remember, you know, 79 was, uh, I was, I was still in high school, so I'm yeah. playing on the Pan Am team. Mm -hmm. That was my first practice, you know, with Coach Knight, you know, so, um, you know, I hadn't really. That's true. Yeah. So, so uh, experiencing him in practice with, with the Pan Am team and, and Woodson and O'Corrin and mm -hmm. Ronnie Lester and Cal Macy and, and that, mm -hmm. that group, 
it was uh, it. It was intense. <laughs> right. I know it was. And, and and I shared the kind of the same experience because then I, obviously I wasn't as talented as you, but I had some of the same skill set. So when I walked out there and I go between my legs and I throw my first over the head pass and that shit go, it goes out of bounds and it, it's an issue. Did you have any being one of those guys with I call it soul to your game? You got soul. You can dance. If you can, you you can groove to any type of beat. But when in the night system, you know you got to play to his music, and you got to find your groove in there somewhere. Did you have any uh, experiences early on having to adjust to his system? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, you know, it was, um, you know, and, and it was more about my my dribbling skills. Uh, <laughs> oh. He always thought that, uh, you know, that I was trying to be flashy. Mm -hmm. ever I would change directions and you know and I told him it was easier for me and you know we went back and forth yeah yeah of, you know you know he would scream at me and and I didn't really know that I was doing it it was just <laughs> right you know what he wanted yeah you no know, but it was just part of my my everyday game you yep. know That's how I dribbled the basketball yeah it wasn't about being flashy it was more about protecting it yeah and you know like right now you know Defenders, they can't really get close enough to touch. They have mm -hmm. to stay back. So now the crossover has really come into play. Yeah. Because you can play with the ball in front of you. Right. He was coming up. You couldn't put that ball in front mm -mm. of you. Because that defender was right here in your chest. <laughs> right. You had to be able to protect it. Right. The only way you can change direction, the only way I found that you can change direction without turning your back and losing mm -hmm. vision with your teammates was to put it between your legs. Yeah. Now you can change and, and, and keep going. Right. And your knee became like your elbow. Right. Because that defender was down there, you got some room to, you know, stay and you can keep your vision. Yeah. You can see all, you know, you can see the whole court. Right. Now I would change direction to go to the left side, you know, he blow the whistle. Right? <laughs> Point his legs. And I was like, I didn't I didn't even know I had went through my life. Right, yeah, it's natural. <laughs> and so finally, you know, we, we got to a point where, you know, I, uh, you know, he would scream at me constantly, you know, mm -hmm. you know, don't throw this pass, don't throw that pass. And, and you know, he wanted you to have so many passes before right. the shot. Mm -hmm. and, and I understood he wanted the defense to work. But I was like, you know, Defense can work on in transition too. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I got, I got, I got Land to turn on the left. I got Ray Coburn on, on the right. right. <laughs> yeah, it too. That's you know trailing. I got, yep. I got shooters. You know, I'm in paradise. Absolutely, <laughs> weapons, you know, and yeah. and if we can get in transition and run, you know, we won't have to go through all the time facing their half court defense. Right. So finally, you know. Um, you know, it took a while, you know, You're right. <laughs> but it is a, a lot, uh -huh. I mean, most, you know, once a week. Uh, but finally he was like, okay, try it. And mm -hmm. once we got to the tournament, I mean, we, I think we still hold the record for uh, the most double digit consecutive wins in the NC In the NCAA tournament. Y'all want to run. How did we beat? Our closest game actually was North Carolina and we beat them by 13. I think we won. <laughs> Dang. They had pros on that team. Yeah. That's so we, crazy. We become a, a great defensive team, but, mm -hmm. you know, our transition game and our fast break game was was on another level. Right. I think we dropped 99 on Maryland. Dang. Uh, I think we beat them 99 to 54, something like that. <laughs> oh, in a tournament. Yeah, it was a crazy score. Man. And you, and we're going to dive into that heavy because I want in that, in, in, about the 81 team, you guys lost nine games that year, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so what clicked? Like, what happened in the season? Because, and correct me if I'm wrong, you guys won the Big Ten title? Yeah. Losing nine games, like, that's that's crazy. So that's not how the parity in the league was. But in that season, what was it? You talked about the, the transition. Was it that? being able to say Coach Knight taking the reins off a little bit and letting y'all run, what clicked? That's what clicked. Uh, yeah. We came back from, from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we – going to Hawaii, we had great practices. Even in Hawaii, we had great practices. Mm -hmm. 
but I, I remember we was playing Clemson. We went over to scouting for it, the scouting report with Clemson and you know, and I I had never seen Clemson play. Mm-hmm. But they had these two guys, one by the name of Tree Rollins and the yeah. other by the name of Elvin Hayes. <laughs> Bro, who, who Elvin did you say Elvin Hayes? No. Tree Rollins and Larry Nance. Oh, <laughs> oh. So, so every time we went to the basket, man, I mean, they was they was throwing landing turners. Yeah, get them. that. <laughs> I would come in with my little scoop, and before I knew it, it yeah, was, gone. You know, who who are these guys? Right, yeah, right. Little did we know we was playing against probably the two blessed shot blockers of all yeah, time? Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> But anyway, we lose in Hawaii. We have a terrible time in Hawaii. Come back, and and I'm going through all types of stuff personally. You know, yeah. my mom, uh, had a heart attack, uh, and then we come back from Hawaii, and mm-hmm. got no lights. We 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 got mm-hmm. you know, basically set out. You know, there's mm-hmm. no lights at the house. Right. No food. And I remember my girlfriend, who's my wife now. You know, dropped me off, and and I, I walked into the house, and there was nobody. You know, the door was open, nobody yeah. was there, and you know, no telephone, nothing, and you know, didn't know where anybody was. Um, so, lucky enough for me, she. I don't know why she turned around and came back, AJ. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't have turned around and came back. Mm. Where I would have had to go that day, right? Like, you know. Part of my family was at my aunt's house, my mm-hmm. sister's house, friend's house. You know how you had to split up when yep. they not there. So, you know, yep. there was just another period where you're just homeless. So, I, you know, we, and now I'm in college, right? Mm-hmm. So, right. So uh, now I got to go back to school, mm-hmm. go back to school. You know, I'm right. still all messed up. You know, and school yep. hasn't started we go back for practice. Yeah. You no, know, so we we had a, we had good practices and you know star mm-hmm. practices. I mean, we went through a lot. Coach Knight and I, I mean, we really like was was going at it. Right. But emotionally, I had got to the point where, hey, look, I ain't got nothing to lose, man. Exactly. Your why got bigger than the game. And and and, and today, I, you can't scream at me today. <laughs> <laughs> today, man. I, <laughs> right. I'm just not in a good place emotionally, mentally. And, <laughs> and I think, you know, he pushed pushed so far. And then I think he realized, like, realized. okay, this is something different. Yeah, <laughs> right. Because my, my attitude was like, I, I, you know, you can't, you don't ever tell anybody what's happening in the back. You know, but my attitude was like, hey, man, I ain't right. And I. Yeah. I, that was can, it. We can go right now. <laughs> right, right. And we're gonna do this right now, once and for all. Like, I, I, hey, and w- it, you, you talked about you know transferring and stuff. Did you leave? Did you really was was you really gonna? Is a point where you was really gonna leave? I know for me, I was like, there's a chance that I was like, man, I I don't know, man. This is this is different. So, but I had an assistant coach and Mike Davis. Who was able to talk me off the ledge? You know what I mean? Did you have that moment? AJ, I don't think there's a player who's ever played <laughs> like, that didn't think about leaving at some point in time. Right. <laughs> whether it be the whether it be the, the the top scorer or the twelfth mm-hmm. man. Right. Yeah. He he was giving it to everybody. Right. It was. So yep. we, we we all thought about leaving at one point. <laughs> Every week we was having a conversation about Maybe. man, how right. I could take this. Or right, right. Go, you know. <laughs> you're um, and your tell me if your your eighty team was it more talented than your eighty one team? My eighty team definitely was more talented, but we all got injured. Well, they all yeah, uh huh. You know, we so my eighty team we was ranked number one, mm-hmm. and uh, Steve Bushy, um, you know, started with me as a freshman. And Randy Whitman was on that team. He got hurt. So Randy got hurt. Bushy got hurt. Kitchell got hurt. And Woodson got hurt. Mm-hmm. Mike Woodson was our leading scorer. And, you know, so we, we lose, you know, four players from that team, from that 80 team. And if they're all there, you know, we, we definitely win it in eight. 
Absolutely. We don't but, have yeah. Of injuries. I read, so you, I mean, to me, you had the best two year run in, in school history. I don't know, two Big Ten titles, national title, everything, all everything. But in 1981, you get an opportunity to play for the national title. And to explain to those of us who've never experienced that before, uh, what is that like to, to, to play? Because that's why we all play. We all compete to try to get there. There's only one team, players, and get there. And you were one of them at all levels. What is, it, what is different? What's magical about the NCAA tournament and winning it? Um, a, it's, 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 it's the last game. Yeah. But B, it's like, you know, all the work that you put in, now you get a chance to really play for the national championship, play for yeah. the play for the prize. Mm -hmm. um, and, and every team starts with the goal and the dream of being able to play for the prize. Absolutely, yeah. Sometimes you 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 know, you just don't you don't get the opportunity. Yeah. And and I was always one of those guys that was taught at a very young age that, you know, um, you know, when you when you get your shot, you know, you you, you are you gonna take it? Yeah. And not on not just take it, but are you gonna make it? Right, yeah, exactly. Right. A lot of people be like, Oh yeah, I take the shot. No, yeah. no, no. Are you gonna make it? Make the shot. <laughs> so so right. my mindset going into that game was, you know, we had lost to Carolina earlier. Mm -hmm. And I knew I would uh, Worthy Perkins, they were the best back line in uh, in college at that time. And I knew playing against them that talent-wise, we didn't have the talent to really compete or play against them, mm -hmm. you know, from a talent standpoint. Right. But from a mental toughness standpoint, I thought we were just as tough-minded as they were. Mm -hmm. We also understood, and I also understood their coaching path. <laughs> so you not only play against the the players, but you also play against the coach who is coaching the team. Mm -hmm. And so understanding Dean Smith's tendencies and, and, and his coaching style, I knew that those first, you know, five to seven minutes of the game would be difficult for us because they had worthy perfect yeah. mm -hmm. and I would. Yeah. Yeah. But then he played in, in North Carolina had that platoon system. Where, yep. uh, you know, they would put five in. Five in, five out. Yeah. And, and I said to coach, I was like, okay, well, just let us stay out here. Because when they put them other five dudes in, we're going to be all right. Yeah. Uh huh. And as soon as they, as soon as, you know, Wood, Worthy, and Perkins went out, they brought the other crew in. Let's get this lead. <laughs> got back into the game. Yeah. <laughs> We were down. We were down early in the game, mm -hmm. and and then when when those guys went out, we stayed on the floor, and and that's where you know Coach Knight was brilliant in that because mm -hmm. he, you know, all the and the, and you sure I'm sure you know this AJ like all the stamina you need to rest you need to blow yeah. off mm -hmm. and nah man nope. <laughs> you know you you in playing you ready to play <laughs> exactly make the play and yeah. you know. All this you can rest tomorrow. Right, yeah, definitely. That's that's how he played and, and that's why we were able to, in my opinion, win that Carolina game because we got mm -hmm. back in uh to go into the half and then coming out at halftime, uh made two quick steals and once we got up defensively I knew they we would be able to shut them down. Right. And what do you do you see recall actually because I know sometimes some things can get kind of hazy because you were in such a survival mode from a personal standpoint. Did you get a chance to really enjoy that national championship? Because I'm sure in your head you like you decided at the beginning of the first semester you was going hardship. So you <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking back like, OK, if I'm Isaiah, I'm like I walk in my crib and ain't no lights and nothing like that. I, hey this is it. So did you really get a chance to enjoy it with all those things on your mind? No, no. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, I, I never knew like you could go pro. You right. Know? Oh, you did know her. Like in, in 81, you know, Spencer Haywood had just kind of, you know, won a hardship rule and all that. In order to go to the NBA, you had to prove hardship. You just couldn't like go to the NBA and, and you know, coming from Today. where from. We didn't know all those rules. Yeah, yeah, it's all yeah. You just trying to, you know, you just trying to get the training table. Right, <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> um, but no, I didn't. You know, I remember that the night we won, mm -hmm. 
you know, my mom was there and my brothers and them, every, everybody had, you know, drove down and, you know, we just, you know, we just hung out, you know, yeah. after, after you win, you know, that's a, that's an Indiana celebration. You won and coach Knight, you know, yeah. you get to slap on the back. Huh? <laughs> nice job. And, right. That, that's that was, it. You know, we all uh, went back to the hotel. We had they had some pizza there mm-hmm. for us. We all sat around just eating pizza, waiting to fly back the next day. Mm-hmm. And you know, I when you fly back the next day after you won it, you you saw all the celebrations on television because you was in your room watching while watching it. everybody yeah. was celebrating in Bloomington, right? Right. Yeah. So you like, man, I can't wait. Can't to get wait to get there. Right. <laughs> And when you get back the next day, all the party's over. <laughs> right. <laughs> the students, everybody that celebrated and everything else. So right. we get back, we fly back in the next day. You know, we had a little, little thing at Assembly Hall. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the day after that, yeah. It was over. Class. Yeah. Wow. That's that's amazing. Did, so what was that conversation like when you had it, when you told Coach, hey, look, I'm, I'm, I'm gone, man. Like, what was that like? So no, no player had ever left Indiana at that oh, time. And, uh, and Coach Knight, this this is what I like about Coach Knight. Mm-hmm. He knew my situation, but he wasn't going to say, yeah, leave. Right. He's going to give you the wink and the nod. Right. Mm-hmm. But, you know, so when I when I made my decision, he was gone. He was fishing. You know, he's mm-hmm. going to fishing trips. Yeah. He can't get a hold of it. Um, so at that time, Nancy was his wife, um, and so I, I called her up, you know, to let her know what I was doing, and, and she said, well, coach, coach told me to tell you he, he knew that you were leaving, and, and good luck. Right. Wow. That's it? That was it. <sighs> That's incredible. Like, is it? I would have begged you, like, hey, 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 we can do this again, you know. <laughs> like, but I, he, I think you're right, though. Coach Knight is, he, he understands, so. Yeah, he knew, he knew I, I mean, really, we we as a family had, when I say nothing, mm-hmm. we, had, we had, if there was zero, we definitely was less than zero. Damn. And, <laughs> I mean, we was literally, you know, my family and I, we were literally hanging on. By society by, you know, just by our fingernails. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like I say, every day was a was a search for food. And wow. AJ, you know, I can remember, you know, walking with my mom to the bus stop. And, you know, you know, you always had the holes in your shoes. Right? Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> Coming apart. The snow would get in, and <laughs> you had to put that little plastic under your <laughs> right. Your soul, so. Um, and I remember I looked down and my mom had, some, uh, she, you know, she didn't have no shoes, but she was like, you know, I got to get to work. Right. Um, had on some pair of glad plastic bags with rubber bands. Tied wow. Going to work. Mm-hmm. And that, that's how, that's how bad things were for us. So, wow. That's an incredible story, man. That's crazy. I told you, you should you got to get that the new Netflix version of your story going, man. I'm telling you, throw that on your list. <laughs> um, so, what was your your relationship with Coach Knight like during your playing career? Because you know, Coach Knight hated the NBA, so it was like you know he just thought that was the worst thing. Or at least that's what he was perception. Yeah. What was your relationship with like him during your playing career? You know, we I, I would say uh, during my playing career, I don't know if, I don't know if any player had a relationship with coach Knight. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> he, was, he was coach, you know. Right. And and you were afraid to talk to coach. <laughs> exactly. Well, that, I'm not calling you, man. <laughs> and, I, and I look I look back on that and and I, I just say how fortunate I was to have someone who really wanted to coach me mm-hmm. but wasn't trying to be my friend. Right, yeah. Cause see, if he would have been trying to be my friend, I think, I think I probably would have got away with a little bit more, and I probably wouldn't have become as good a player or a person as I think I became. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I thank him for, for having the courage truly, to to coach me. Cause I look back and yeah, I was I was really talented, um, and to coach a talented player. 
and not let him, you know, skate. You know, it, it, it took a lot of courage for him to to coach me. And I'm sure I'm sure it was very, you know, um, demanding and tough on him. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm glad I'm lucky that I was coached by Coach Knight. Right. Yeah, his 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 ways helped me to eliminate the uh, the need or the want for you know like society loves the the participation trophies and the the the, the awards because I re- I remember when uh, my senior year it was uh, unfortunate that it, he was going through uh, you know being fired at that time and I was very upset with him at that time because they I was one of the one of the wooden award finalists. And every, all my guys was at the ceremony, you know what I mean? They got the coaches sitting next to them. And I'm sure you probably would have, you probably didn't make it. Did you make it to your Wooden Award final, uh, ceremony? Okay, same thing. Uh, <laughs> story, go ahead. Go, no, tell that story right now. Go ahead. So, I, so my freshman year, we uh, we go to San Diego. Mm-hmm. And now, we win the San Diego tournament. Mm-hmm. I'm named MVP at a tournament. Oh man! <laughs> Don't like the way we play. <laughs> right. So, so when they called my name out to get the trophy, he wouldn't let me go out to get the trophy. Really? <laughs> my MVP trophy that I won as a freshman in the San Diego Christmas tournament is still in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> he never let you. He never let y'all take it home. <laughs> Trophy home. I didn't get to get it. I didn't get nothing. It was like, right. He's like, you play like horse shit, you know. Yeah, da, 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 da. And, and it's like, uh, that's for. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I remember them days. And but as, as I was saying, I was like, it, I was upset at that time. As I got older, uh, you know, I was like, you know, that's the the fact that this man created and made me an All-American is what's most important. Not to, if that's his way, I signed up to be a part of his way. I had to respect that way. And in the end, Coach Knight was always a guy you you call and he would answer the phone. He'd say, what, you, what do you need? It wasn't no, hey, what's up, man? How your family doing? It's, it's, you know, how's Karen doing? How is what you need? Okay, get, oh, that's what you need? All right, but, but thank you for everything, AJ. Goodbye. And I was like, hey, you know, but that's the way he is. And I, I respect that more than a, a coach that's, you know, trying too hard to be your friend, trying to and to get other recruits. Like it, you, you, it was what it was with Coach Knight. And that's what I respected about it. You know, AJ, I, I, I look at I look at all of us as as uh, players and men who have played, you know, for Coach Knight. Mm-hmm. And whenever we are all together. The one thing that really stands out to me, and I'm sure it stands out to you too, Mm -hmm. how different we are as men than some of the other schools who have played, you know, for other coaches. Mm -hmm. You land up all Indiana, you know, players. And forget, forget, I ain't talking talent. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, just as men and, and just stand up guys. Yeah. You you can call anybody from any one of those teams. Right. The only thing they're going to say to you, AJ, is yes. When can I come? Yep. What, what you need. <laughs> yeah. Just like you did. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I've talked, have never talked to you. And I was like, man, should I hit him up? Because I, I don't like calling. The first time I talk to somebody really is, is to ask them for something. So that was hard for me. So, but the consensus I've gotten calling Calvert, calling Steve, uh, uh, and these guys, it was like, hey, yeah, I got you. What you need? When? What time? And, and they were there. And I was like, man, I'm in a hell of a fraternity. So now I got to I got to repay that. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, that's that's what we are. And that's who he created. And it's exactly what he was. And that's why, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of such a, a rich fraternity, man. That, that's a great point, man. For real. Um, you were part of the ceremony. Did, were you part of the process of bringing him back to IU? And, and let me ask you this, because I felt like this. Do you think it was about? I don't want to say too late, but was it about 10 years too late? You know what I mean? I don't want to say too late because it was a great moment, but I think it would have been felt like no other if it was like five years earlier. What do you think? 
Yeah, I, I look at it as I say two 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 things. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think people really understood the, the depth of hurt that Coach Knight experienced mm -hmm. being let go at Indiana. So if it, and and I and I and I I use the analogy of uh, it's like your first heartbreak, your first love. Yeah. Indiana University was Coach Knight's first love. Right. Emotionally. And that that separation, all these years, he was away. To me, it, I was looking at a man who was broken heart. Right. Yeah, for sure. You know, he, he had his heart broken. And, and his reaction was of a broken hearted man. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming back and. And, and, you know, it, it took a long time for that broken heart to mend and to heal. And, you know, and it still didn't mend and heal. Uh, you know, it was what it was. Yeah, for sure. You know, and part of the process of getting him to come back to Indiana, you know, we we all took turns calling. Yep. Um, you know, I called him, Buckner called him, Whitson called him. Kitchen would call him, mm -hmm. and you know, over the years, we we've all have been trying to mend the rift between Indiana and 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 Coach Knight, because uh, you know, to me, there there are four great you know college programs when you think about you know the college coaches in their name. So when you think of UCLA, first coach that comes to your mind is who? John Wooden. Okay, and when you think of North Carolina, the first coach that comes to your mind is. Dean Smith. Okay, now those two universities, they've had coaches underneath them that have won championships also. But from Dean Smith to John Wooden, and then, you know, when you look at Indiana, the, I don't care who coaches at Indiana. Right. The first name that's going to always come to your mind is Coach Knight. Yep. And it's Coach Knight, Indiana, Dean Smith, North Carolina. Yep. Yep. In UCLA. Yep. Now we, as a Indiana family, our coach was missing from the capstone. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so coach coming back basically put the capstone on, and now you know everything is kind of right in the basketball orbit again. Yeah. It's funny you say that. Like, it, it's hilarious. It's funny you say that because I, I looked at. It, I always said it was a great cloud over the program since yeah. since two thousand. And I said, no matter how good they are becoming, it's always something's going to happen until they they bring that last piece back and make it right with that last piece. And and you were on the floor during that time period. Was was Coach Knight saying anything? What was that energy like? I heard you growl at him, get him going a little bit. Like, what was he saying anything? You know, the only thing he was saying was defense. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. And you was like, yeah. And I was like, what is going on? Like, yeah. You no, know, that's Coach Knight's mindset. That's it's his like, mindset. Don't let that guy score. Right. <laughs> I am going to give you everything that you need <laughs> to know about this person. So right. Yep. Stop him from scoring. Yeah. And, and and when he got on the floor, it was a beautiful moment. But was but to me the 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 best moment was how the student body the student body who who wasn't there for Coach yeah. Knight's uh, you know, championship years, but they understood the moment. And this is where Indiana basketball is is so special to me mm -hmm. because they understood the moment. And the student body rose to the moment and, and, and gave him that emotion and that standing ovation and that thunderous applause that he needed, that the school needed, yep. the basketball program needed. Mm -hmm. Only people who could really make that happen and make that moment right and that special, it wasn't us being there, AJ. Right. It was the student body body who said boom yeah we're going to acknowledge this moment and make it happen right for these guys and, right. and that was 
me, that was the most powerful, beautiful moment of the, of the whole it thing. It was. Thank you, man, for your time. We appreciate you for everything. Anything for me, man, reach out. I'll definitely be staying in touch with you to, to keep up with you, man. Anything I can help with, let me know. Tweeting out things, making sure that uh, you, you, it is, it's all known. I think you get a horrible rap from people who don't know Isaiah Tom. And anytime you can pick up the phone and, and and not talk to a guy since 1999 and you step in and say, what do you need? I got you. That's the type of guys that we have in our program. And and, and you guys are the pillars of that. So thank you. And congratulations on, on an awesome career, man. Uh, you can't get no better than what you did. Like, I, I know you, you know, I see the, the 88, the game you got. You, you should have three titles in the NBA. Yeah. You should. You sprained your ankle and you, you know what I mean? And the next game was heck for you. But, but we know hey, there's no regrets in what you did. And you, you, you made an impact on our lives, especially me being from an Indiana kid born in Illinois, just like you. So, hey, man, thank you for everything, Z. No, well, thank you. And I, and I appreciate the kind words and, and, and all that you've said. And just remember, the, the only people who say bad things about us are the people that we beat. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, OK. And we're going to end it on that. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate you. Uh, that's good.